Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and this is MSFS Flight Plans, the place you go when you don't know where to go. Because all we do around here is find the coolest, best looking, most interesting places on the planet. And then we fly the coolest, most interesting, best looking planes ever built all over them. So this is going to be a fun flight for us. I needed a little breather after the last few trips, which involved quite a bit of research on my part. So we're going to check out a fresh release by Clifford Designs, who is the modder who did all that work over the Philippines, including the scenery in that Manila Bay flight that we took a couple weeks ago. And this one's going to be for the island of Moorea. And I had to look at how to pronounce that. I keep wanting to say Moorea, but it's Moorea if you say it correctly, and I'll probably say it incorrectly from here on out which is directly west of Tahiti in French Polynesia. And I have not seen one inch of this yet with the add-on installed. I did take a flight over here just to see what it looked like before the mod. So I'll give you my candid thoughts on what looks different and hopefully a lot better. And Clifford Designs had, or Cliff, the guy that is from Clifford Designs, had reached out to me via email and said he was going to send this over before it was, I think he was saying he was going to send it over before it was released, but I, I didn't get that. So I bought this with my own money just to keep me honest, which is about 13 bucks, I think in Orbix and based on the thumbnails it looks really really cool it did not look that great before I you know put that in came out here last time so based on the thumbs it looks cool there's a huge waterfall somewhere out here lots of work along the beaches and the last time I flew out here I didn't have the Oceana pack installed either and the shorelines and everything look pretty good even without that so we'll see if that makes a difference too and we're going to take the Mini 500 which is probably the best sightseeing helicopter because it's just one seat and you can see out both sides really easy and just since we're having a fun flight, I left the live weather on. There are some breaks in the clouds, but this is what it looks like apparently most of the time out here. Lots of rain, lots of wind, and lots of humidity, which I'll tell you about. So right now it looks like we got about 11 knots on the ground coming from 51 degrees. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's start this baby up real quick. I already got the fuel valve open. Let's turn the battery on. That's going to help. And just go ahead and hit the starter. And while that's going on, I'm going to turn the alternator on so don't forget about that. Let's take a quick look at the Google map. And I use the satellite map for this one just because I don't really know what we're going to be looking at. So what we're going to do is leave from the airport, which is right over here. This is Moorea Airport. And we're parked right about this little spot right here. And the island's not real big, so I don't know how long it's going to take to be in the air. I didn't take the full flight before, before I put the add-on in. I checked out right around here. So the waterfall is probably somewhere between here and here because I didn't see it up to that point. So we're going to come around this way, just skirt around the whole island, and just to kind of show you where we are in the world, I'd never be able to find it if we started zoomed out. But here's Tahiti right next to it. We'll see Tahiti when we're coming around this side of the island. And if you've been to Bora Bora, that's right up here. And I'm going to mention a couple more places while we're flying around, so let me just show you where those are. Samoa and Tonga. I'm going to mention those a little bit later. So that's about 1,500 miles from there to there. And of course, there's a reason why I'm telling you that. All right, so, I mean, how's this weather look? We do have some breaks. Hopefully it won't be so bad that we can't see anything on the ground, but again, this is a fun flight, so we'll just see how it goes. And I gotta tell you guys, if he, if Clifford did as good of a job as he did out in the Philippines, he may be giving Jeppesen a run for their money as far as building out rocks and cliffs. So the thing I noticed out here last time is there was a lot of stretching, and they've got a lot of sharp mountain peaks out here that all look literally just like spikes, like blades sticking up in the air before. So it didn't look very good at all. And we'll just see what we got this time. All right, I think everything else is pretty much good to go. Let's check our barrow since this is live weather. That looks good to go. And we're at about sea level, which sounds about right. All right, up we go. We're just going to follow the coastline here. And there's that wind taking us right away. Well, hopefully we'll get out of this rain or I may have to turn the live weather off. We'll see. All right, I'm giving it a lot of left anti-torque pedal because we're getting some blown around. Let's just come right down here to the coast. So this is Moria Airport, the only one on the island with a single runway of 4,000 feet. And it was built in 1967. And usually accommodates around 200,000 passengers per year. So we got a golf course out here. Yeah, this is a little bit too rainy. Let's just see how it goes over here. Yeah, we're going to get a break over there. All right, we'll be cool. In fact, we got some sunshine on the other side. Well, this is kind of nice. I didn't want to turn on the windshield effects because I didn't want to have any performance issues. It wasn't bad. The frame rates were in the 50s, even in a helicopter, before the add-on, so we'll see how that goes. One thing that I definitely noticed out here is a lot of the places where it looked like there were boats in the satellite image, there were just spots in the water. So I think what he did is put boats on those spots, which is cool. And there's a lot of places up in these coves where you can see wakes from the boats, but there were no boats there before, so he probably fixed that too, I'm guessing, since I can tell he already put boats on the places where the spots were. Little reefs out there look pretty cool. 
Yeah, all right, we're going to get some breaks. Hopefully the other side of the island, maybe this, just the rain shadow effect, pushing those clouds up is what's making the rain on this side, because that is the direction that the wind would be blowing over. All right, let's come down low over here. So the marinas were already there before, at least the boats were, probably because of the marina pack, but the piers weren't there, so it looks like you probably touched that up. Oh yeah, here we go. Breaking the weather. Fantastic. So let me just try to do a little trimming here. And we're going to come down that cove on the left over there, which is called Cook's Cove, named after Captain James Cook, one of the first Englishmen to come out here, but not one of the first Europeans. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So a lot of those buildings looked about like that. Those are all default, but based on the thumbnails, and man, if you get out and walk around, and I'm not sure where the pictures in the thumbs were taken, but they've got all kinds of people and stuff down at these little resorts. I don't think they were animated, but... It said there was some animation, so we'll see exactly what that is. I need to trim right a little bit. No problem. There we go. Okay, for sure I can tell those rocks up there look way, way better. There was none of that stuff before. And see that mountain off in the distance? That was just a big spike sticking up in the air before. Alright, that thing down to the left has been touched up for sure. That's not a default building. Yeah, and that little boat's moving. See it? Right in front of us. So I think this is where the cruise ships come into. Cook's Bay. Although I don't see anything that looks big enough to hold a cruise ship. And we got a nice radio tower over there. Oh yeah, those mountains look fantastic. Alright, so you can still see a little bit of stretching up there. So they're not completely covered with the modded rocks, but before... Totally stretchy. And over there to the left, that looks absolutely amazing. Alright, we're going way too slow. Alright, we got a little outrigger sailboat down there. And a very big yacht of some kind. Oh, wow. Yep, so there is stretching up there for sure. I probably would have just gone ahead and coated all of that with the cliffs. And then it just would have been covered up. But I'm not a modern, I have no idea how to do that, so maybe it's a lot more complicated than I'm thinking. Over to the right looks amazing. Alright, I'm just going to go full bore with this collective because I think we can get away with that in this helicopter. I'm taking it all the way up and I'm just going to pitch down. Oh boy, this is beautiful out here. And at this part right here where these fields are and everything looked about like this before as well. Not in the mountains, but everything down on the ground looked about like this. So we still got an 11 knot wind. Now it's coming from... 77 degrees, which is from our left, back behind us. Those mountains look really good, and that looks amazing. Really, really good. That's phenomenal. So according to archaeologists, Moria and the neighboring islands were probably first inhabited by humans around 200 AD, and most likely people coming over from Samoa and Tonga, which are those two islands I showed you, about 1,500 miles away from here. So that was a pretty good haul for people 2,000 years ago. All right, see all those wakes down there? Before, there was no boats at the end of them. There were just wakes in the water. And I'm betting he put some boats down there. But we're going to find out. Look at that thing on the left. What is that? It looks like a uh, bandstand, maybe? Either that or a flying saucer that crashed. That's awesome. That's definitely been modded up. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the end of the wakes. There's boats down there. Boy, that's an easy... That's a gimme right there. Boy, that looks a million times better just sticking a little boat on the end of those things because before there were just wakes with nothing there. And here's a cruise ship. Here we go. So if you're heading in that direction, again, Bora Bora would just be to the northwest. And is that boat moving? No, it's not. He wouldn't make a moving on the, on the wakes. Bora Bora is only about 50 miles away from here. And then again, Tahiti's right across this little channel between the two of them. So maybe this is where they bring the cruise ships in. On Wikipedia it said they come into Cook's Bay, but I didn't see, I don't see any piers big enough for cruise ship, but they may just bring people with tenders into wherever they're going, so maybe that's what's up here. Alright, I think there's going to be some little islands I saw on the Google map over here off the northwest corner that look like they might have some stuff going on because there were a couple thumbnails of that too. Yep, they're there over there, so we'll cruise down there and check those guys out. Putting those rocks in there makes all the difference in the world. That's incredible. So the first Europeans to lay eyes on these islands, at least as far as we're aware, 
was the famous Portuguese explorer Pedro Fernandez in 1606. So not too long ago in the grand scheme of things. So I don't think adding the Oceana pack made much of a difference, because it looked about like this before. There were no boats out here at all before the add-on, so that is great. Okay, let's see what's down there on the left. That looks like it's something that's been touched up, so let's dive on down and check that out. Lots of little cabana huts, and it looks like that resort behind it probably also got touched up. Oh, yeah. And there's a bird flying around. Did you see that? That looks really cool. You know, if, if I had more time, I'm not going to do it now, but I might come back out here and land at some of these resorts because I think he touched up a lot of this stuff and put people down there in a lot of these resorts. Okay, let's see what we got on this island. That boat's moving around. Cool. Got a little catamaran also moving. Look at all those rocks down there. That looks great. Really great. And I think I saw on the Sim world map that there might be a helipad on the side of this island, so we'll check that out. Look at these rocks here. Oh my gosh, that makes all the difference. So you can tell what it looked like before they did that. Just blurry. Well, I can tell you right now, even if I did not see anything else out here, totally worth 12 bucks for this. This is a great job. And for a whole island, too, that looked honestly terrible before. I would not have picked this for any flights on our channel. It looks so bad. Because we only do cool and good looking out here. Alright, so is there a helipad out here or not? I thought I saw something that said there was an H out here. We'll come all the way around the side. Maybe down there? Uh, you wouldn't be able to squeeze one in between those things. I don't think. Over here? That's not a helipad. Well, maybe I was looking in the wrong spot. Unless there's one down there in those trees. Alright, we're going too slow now. Let's pick it up. Alright, so we'll do a little mountain climbing over here as we kind of cut across the inside of this island, see how the tops of these mountains look. And somewhere up here there's something called a, a little lookout. I don't know if they'd be able to see it or not. And that wasn't something I saw in the add-on, but it was on the Google map. Maybe it was this little island. Let's see. No, they wouldn't put a helipad on this little thing. I don't think, but we're going to find out. Another little boat moving down there. Boy, he's cooking. He needs a wake. Nope, no helipad. I'm going to have to go back there and look and see what that was. There's another bird flying around. All right, up we go. So Morea and all the islands in this region were formed around 1.5 million years ago as the Earth's crust slid across a volcanic hotspot on the Pacific Plate, forming what is known as the Society Chain of Islands. And I don't know if I'm guessing that includes Tahiti. I don't know how far that stretches. And I don't know where the name Society came from either, because that wasn't explained on the wiki page. Okay, I think we're going to get some pretty nice peaks up here. And we'll come all the way across the very top, just to see if we got a little Easter egg of some kind up there. If we can climb enough. And the climate out here is considered tropical warm. I don't know if that's an actual official classification, but that's what it said. And it was in quotation marks. And extremely humid. With a fairly steady average temp of around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. But they say there's also a pretty constant sea breeze out here, which we're certainly experiencing now, which probably makes the humidity a little bit more bearable. Alright, so we can see a little bit of blotchiness on the top there, but it definitely helps to have those ridges worked over. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kind of just zigzag around this ridge up here. And then we'll come back down along the coast, because I don't want to miss that waterfall wherever it is. We're going to have to scour the inside of that coast over there. It's probably going to be somewhere on this range, because it looked really tall. And tourism aside, the native population is not huge out here. As of 2017, there was less than 20,000 full-time residents. As you can see, there's not a lot of places except for the tourist spots down along the coast. But I think I did spot a couple schools out here. Alright, so this isn't super amazing. So you got some more stretching over there. Again, huge, huge improvement over what was out here before, but I think the coastline's got more of the heavy work, so let's come on back down there. And an interesting little note about the wildlife out here. Before the arrival of humans, there were no land mammals of any kind out here. So everything with fur was either brought by people or was stowaways arriving on ships over the years. 
But they said they did have some native insects, which isn't that surprising, I guess. Crabs, that makes sense. But also snails and lizards, so it kind of makes you wonder how those guys came over. But I guess a bird maybe could have brought a snail over here and dropped it. In the sim, it says the top speed on this thing is 99 knots. But you can see, based on our airspeed indicator, we've got a little bit of room above that. Looks like it can get up to about 115 without any problems. It's not making that overspeed noise. All right, another nice little harbor down there, a little radio mast. And now we need to start looking for our waterfall, which will be somewhere out here. Up there? Nope. What we do, you just have a constant speed of 10 to 15 knots all the time. I wonder if we'll get back in that rain on the other side and we're trying to come into land. So I'm not seeing too much that looks super touched up out here, but there may just not be anything of significance. Waterfall, nope. Look at the top of that mountain over there. That's incredible. And then that other big thing sticking up in the air. Really cool. I mean, I can't even imagine how much time it takes. I mean, it's not like you're just drawing a couple of walls and throwing a roof on something if you're doing that buildings. Again, I don't know how any of that works, but I imagine doing landscape work is probably not easy. Ooh, what is this thing down here? I mean, just to model every little nook and cranny in those rocks. What is that? A little breakwater? Look at that. Look at all those little rocks on the side of it. Oh, it's kind of popping a little bit. That's pretty cool. All right, waterfall over here. Maybe. Nope, man, that... All right, so for the thumb for this video, I think I'm going to come up around the side of that mountain, take a shot with a helicopter in front of it. That'll be cool. Now, the radio mast over there, I'm not seeing any more. I see some rocks down there that have been touched up. Nothing really out here. So, Tahiti would be... Oh, it's obscured by those clouds. Unless it's around the side of this mountain right over here. But it's almost directly east of us, so we'll see as we kind of come around here. That's probably the base of it over there, right underneath those clouds. Waterfall? Nope. Not yet. Alright, we'll just keep on going. I feel like I might need to drop my camera just a little bit. Because I'm kind of having to bend my head down a little bit to look out that window. I don't... Uh, nope, no waterfall over there. Okay. We do not want to miss that after taking a trip around the entire island. This is really neat. And you know what I've kind of been wondering? What are all the... I mean, if 2024 is really as great as we're being told that it is, what the heck are all of our landscape modders going to do? It's such an integral part of that. It looks like we have a little cloud that got modeled over there. Integral part of the sim ecosystem. All right, so if I can come over here... Yep, see that down there? That's what all of them look like before. So there's no boats on that one, but that's what all the wake spots look like before. Those must have got missed. And I'm also wondering, of course, how they're going to integrate all the existing planes that we have into that. So far, they've said it's not going to be a problem to do that. But, again, I'm not a programmer. I don't know how that works. But I sure hope that's the case, because I don't even know how many thousands of dollars I've sunk into planes and other add-ons. But I don't mind not having to use any of our landscape mods if it really looks that good. Because that's the only reason I'm getting them in the first place. Realism. This waterfall's got to be around here somewhere. We've only got a few more little crags here to go. Alright, we got a big harbor up here. Let's go check that out. And you know what I was trying to take out here is the mosquito. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's about like this one, even skinnier. And you can get it for free on flightsim.to. But I loaded it up, and I was trying to remap all the controls, because none of my helicopter controls worked. And so I think, I, like, you have to collect, connect the collective to your throttle. And it would start up just fine, and it would rev up when I lifted the collective after I attached it to the throttle. But it wouldn't get off the ground, so I couldn't fly it. I've never flown it before, I figured I'd try loading it up for this flight. But I could not get the thing to work, which is too bad, because it's a neat little helicopter. Super, super skinny. And very basic. Boy, I'll tell you what, just covering up the weird-looking stuff with rocks, even if there aren't really rocks there in real life, what a huge difference that makes. 
I know I sound like a broken record, but you guys know how awful it looks when there's just stretchy stuff or photographic trees. That was another thing. There was a lot of photographic trees out here, so he filled all of that in with actual trees, which is just great. All right, we've only got like one more little nook and cranny over here to go, so I'm guessing it's probably up here. Oh, we got another island down there too. And some sailboats. A sailboat. Waterfall? Nope. All right, well, really one more to go. <laughs> so either I missed it or it's gonna be in here. Because on the other side of that is gonna be our airport. Big field of some kind down there. Waterfall? Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Sweet. Well, <laughs> we had to get around the entire island to find it. We should have just gone the other way. And saved ourselves about 10 minutes. No problem. All right, hard turn over here. I think this is animated, too. It looks like it is. Wow, look at that thing. That is cool. Really cool. I wonder if he did anything up on the top of it. Because sometimes you can find a good waterfall, but it's just kind of spitting out of nowhere. So we'll see what that looks like. You definitely get bonus points if you did up anything on the top of it. It is animated. Look at that. And it looks like he did some of the stuff at the top, too. Yeah, because there's some rocks up there above it. Look at that. And there's a little pool down at the bottom. I bet he even put people down there, too. That is awesome. That is so cool. All right, that might be my favorite waterfall in the sim. Good job, Clifford. You've curried favor. Very nice work. Okay, so the airport should just be on the other side of this thing. If we can get over it. And it's definitely bad weather, so we'll see how this goes. All right, we'll get to look at one more little populated area here as we come around. Collective down, and down we go. So now we got a 13 knot crosswind coming from 101, which will be kind of behind us. And I never like when we have a tailwind coming in. It makes it a little bit hard, so I might spin us around. Because if you try to flare to get the skids up, it just keeps blowing you forward. It's a little bit easier when there's a headwind. Ooh, this is a nice looking area here. Really nice. Looks like you got a lot of work. Look down on the left, all the little cars you can see. That's nice. Very nice. The marine looks great. This is just a perfect helicopter for sightseeing. I'd take it out all the time if I wasn't so concerned about getting a little bit of variety on the channel. Well, even though the visibility is not great, I kind of like just occasionally flying into some bad weather because it doesn't work for most of the flights we're doing around here. So the airport's right around this bend. So we'll see if we can get this baby down. And see if we got anything else out here on the way. All right, it's on that point, that far point up there is where the airport is. I probably could have gotten away with putting the windshield effects on, although we're getting a little bit of stuttering now because the frame rates are in the 50s. I should have just done it. Whatever. And I just realized my anti-torque pedals, they're working because look, but they're not moving in the sim. Interesting. Okay. I'd never noticed that before, but when I move them, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they're not moving in the sim. Okay, it looks like we got some more huts down here. We'll get real close since we got bad weather. Those have been modded up for sure. Any boats down there? Wow. Look at that little area over there. They did the pool up. That's a resort that obviously got touched up. I bet there's probably some people in there. And once I'm done recording this, I'm going to come back around and see. I'm going to land at a couple of these and fly the drone around and see where they put the people. All right, let's trim the nose up and come on down here, slow down, and see if we can get this thing down. Maybe I'll try it with a crosswind. That's what I'll do. Because I'm always kind of coming in an angle anyway. Got a couple more radio towers over there. Trim that nose up, bring it way up, and we'll just let it blow us to the side over here. And I don't remember which of these I landed at, probably that one over there on the left. Landed at, took off from. Sorry, I'm still scanning around to see what we may have missed. I wonder if he touched up this airport at all. Not a big place. But it looks like it did, and you can see that that tower is a little bit brighter than everything else out here, which is usually the telltale sign and that building just off to our left that something got modded up. Well, while we're here, we're hopping a drone view. Take a look. We don't have to go anywhere. That'll give us a little sense of how much other stuff may have gotten touched up. Yeah, I think that... See how black that stuff is down there? That probably got touched up. So we'll check it out. Whatever that is over there. You got the little cones on the ground. 
turn up a little bit more. Boy, this thing is sensitive. Once you stop moving forward, you hit those pedals and it moves. That's probably why we were getting some stuttering, because it looks like we got a lot of static elements out here. And give it a little right trim. And some ground effect. Boom. Great. Okay, so let's just go ahead and shut our fuel off. That's probably going to be how we do it. Let's get out, and we don't have anything to look at it. A little nav map, because we already looked at the satellite image, and there's nothing really to see out here, so let's just pop out here and see what we got going on. Uh, yeah, you can go in there. Look at that. Look at that! Oh, no, 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 don't tell me we can't come in. It's like that parallel 42, but we can't. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll just go around and look in all the doors. Alright. I need to slow this drone down a little bit, but I'm not going to. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you can just kind of see in from the side. But it is modeled in there. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, guys. Look at the propeller down there. So for a $13 pack, you get this whole island all modded up. This level of detail in this little building by the airport. Look at this. The entire inside of the thing is modeled. They got a McDonald's in there. Look at that. Anything in here? You can see stuff in there. I can't. It's a little too dark. It looks like a little seating area. Every car is out here. Anything else? I don't know. It's default stuff. What else we got? Luggage. And I know all these resorts are also done up because I saw them in the pictures. I gotta tell you guys, I mean, you pay $20 for just an airport for crying out loud. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, let's just look at the tower real quick. Oh, we can't get in. Uh, Clifford, good job, brother. This is totally worth 13 bucks for a cool island, especially if you want to fly your helicopters out here. Got the fire trucks, and then all these resorts. I'm going to go out, when we're done with this, I'm going to go cruise around all these resorts and see all that stuff, too. Nice work. The only thing I would change is just covering up the rest of the stretching on those mountains, but that's asking way too much for 13 Oh, we had a guy waiting for us, and I just left him standing there. That's asking too much. You're going to charge us 30 or 40 bucks. Maybe I would expect every little square inch to be done up, but this is fantastic. So if you guys like flying helicopters, if you like Oceana Islands, I would say, yep, definitely, definitely worth it. And that's it for this one, guys. Can't wait to see you again in the skies. I may take about a week off. I want to find something really, really cool for us to check out next time. I'm thinking Tokyo, but that's going to take several days to research, so we'll just see. But it's going to be awesome, like always. Can't wait to see you all again in the skies. Later.